Blythedale's always been ahead of other hospitals um, on the forefront of bringing new, new tools in and mental health and suicide prevention is definitely tops on the list. We have children who are often here for a month, maybe six weeks, sometimes even longer. And so there's a much more opportunity for things to come up or come out, thoughts about wanting to hurt themselves. So what we're doing is we've customized a training program specific for our type of families and children that come here. So any child that gets admitted to Blythedale, we do an assessment. It's a simple screening and the idea is to try to identify children who may need extra support. We needed to make sure that every staff member that's working with children 24 hours a day knows how to field these types of issues or questions. What we're seeing is that both outside in the media and what we're hearing in schools and even in our own experiences with our own children and also family members of our staff that this is a real issue. My son Peter was 25 years old and passed away on May 8th. He had learning disabilities, um, was diagnosed with ADHD, then it may be a mood disorder, and he was bullied in school and had a lot of issues that went on. He was diagnosed with a bad clotting disorder, which put him into the hospital. He had many losses in his life, including his, his dad and his favorite uncle. He attempted suicide. We went to St. Vincent's. So they admitted him to the intensive outpatient program. And he called me and said, Mom, this is what's wrong with me. I have bipolar. So he continued on that program and then he got a job. So he was back on his medication. I don't even know what happened because I was diagnosed with cancer for the second time. I was actually feeling better. It was not a terrible time. When I got home, he wasn't home and his lights were on in his room. And I had talked to him at 4.37, said, I love you. And at six o'clock, he died. A police officer came up to my door and said, there had been an accident and I said, Peter. I thought I was going to die myself. My daughter, I told her she couldn't believe it. She had, she had talked to him, the last person she talked to him at 450. She's had tremendous guilt. It's just been the worst thing. So anybody who's thinking of suicide, you don't end the pain. It might end for you, but the pain is absolutely incredible because it's only one unique you. There's no other person like you. There'll never be another Peter. And he's not defined by how he died. I want him I want him to remember how he lived. He would come to me and just say, Mom, give me a hug. Come on, give me a hug. He was my baby. In New York, one person dies by suicide every five hours. We are second from the top of the least amount of suicides. That's pretty sad that 45,000 people a year are dying by suicide, 800 people a week in our country. So I think if somebody's feeling that way, open up, talk to people. Everybody knows somebody who's had some issue with mental health. We have to accept that it's there, get rid of the stigma, and just do it because Peter matters and every single person who suffers from this matters. And, and together we can make a difference. What we're trying to do is to have frontline staff, doctors, nurses, therapists, who might have a child mention something even in passing, to not downplay it or pretend it's not there and instead identify that there's a potential risk here and then have the experts come in to be able to meet with the child. It's a way for them to have a safe environment to discuss it. I think it's gonna be very helpful when you hear that. It's the second leading cause of death for children 5 to 24 years old, and our children here are more at risk. Blythedale always deals with the whole child, and I just think it'll be tremendous, make a tremendous difference.